So I just want to talk to you because you're my best friend and as much as that we're no longer together, I know that you understand me. You see, all during that transition between myself and my wife and the disparagement of my relationship after a really long time, I was starting to fall in love with someone else. And that person came into my life almost immediately after I prayed a profound prayer. And I really felt that God was leading me there. And I really felt that that woman was everything God promised me in every single shape and way. And so what was really hard was holding on to my sanity in terms of my professionalism and in terms of what I knew had to happen, in terms of how I knew how time takes people out of their marriages and how I knew that God told me when I was in my kitchen and I simply just said to the Lord, I love that woman, that the Lord answered and said, she will get a divorce. And I heard that loud and clearly and it was one of the first times I'd heard the Lord. But at the same time, a little later, when I was in my room after we had sort of started associating, I heard from the Lord when I was really upset about the loss of her, that he literally spoke to me in one of those voices that you would only hear out of Hollywood that literally said, you know, I'm in control here and I can help you with this girl. And he said it in one of those kind of godly ways of, you know, I got this for you. And I can't remember the exact language, but it was definitely something I had never heard before in the way that it was told to me. And then there was many times when I really was feeling a loneliness and a need for her. And I would get down on my knees and I would pray for her and the very next second she would refo refollow me on Facebook or Twitter or some social media way and LinkedIn. And it would happen so often it was uncanny. And openly I really felt like God was leading me there because all the images on my altar was really about praying for her. And I really did pray for her every day for three years. And openly about that time I just couldn't handle it anymore. I couldn't handle that I'd held up in my closet, uh, you know, my man's closet where my suits are, a whole bunch of gifts for her and her boys. And each year at Christmas time, I was praying she'd come back to me, but I'd just go off like I do with any type of shopping and purchase something for her. And I just kept it in my closet. But that Christmas, that third year, I just couldn't stand looking at it anymore. And I just made the decision that I'd go off and try to give it to me. And I don't remember exactly whether God said it wasn't a good idea or whether I pushed forward and just got the angels to say, go ahead and do it. And by that time... I was using the tool that she taught me, but it did show up at that door. And I made the mistake of what gift to give first, I guess. And I sort of made the change last minute, and I think that was my problem. That I had intended to give something more sweet in that moment, but I ended up giving something more silly, and it just didn't go any well. And literally she threw me off the porch. And then she made that marvelous call that just fucked my whole life. And I've not been the same since. But both of us teared at that door. And whatever words I spoke, it made her move. And then she said I could leave the gifts, and then she got so mad at me. And I'm like, God damn it, I'm dying here. And I can't say how I felt after that, but every day after that, it was nothing but silence. And openly, the truth is that there isn't one mo moment during the day that I get through that I'm not thinking of her. Not wishing to see her, not wishing to hear her voice, not wishing to know her again. And I really felt like God was leading me to her on my path of love again. And I really felt that I was the right guy at that time, but at this time, who knows? I know that God says that she's supposed to come, and she has come several times to play, but she's not talked to me, and I don't get that. I might have made some mistakes that first time at Christmas, but when she came in and said, you know, can you help me? But literally I had been pissed on by like 13 people that day who were just playing with me like it was some sort of game. Inappropriate questions, inappropriate interactions, and it was literally 4 in the morning, 3 in the morning, and I was fighting with seven layers of clothing, and I'd just taken a, you know, just relieved myself standing in an alleyway, way, and I just mouthed off. And the damnedest thing was that God said in the morning, be careful what you say today. 
and that just totally fucked my brain for the next six months. But I kept my passion going. I kept playing music for her. I kept doing everything I always did on Twitter for 10,000 plus tweets that I've done to say, I love you, motherfucker. And the hardest fucking thing about this is how many people that she's probably involved in something that should have been private the whole fucking time. I never told one person about this. I might have possibly told one person named Mary who was sort of serving me in a metaphysical way. And I got a reading with her that I sort of fell asleep and for all I know her husband was using these audio CDs or these whatever fucking on me in that session but I was really trying to heal from the pain. And I really went a lot of places to try to do that to heal from the pain of losing her. And even when I went to this course at a Methodist church I wasn't really fully there for my father although it helped as he was really in the process of transitioning to heaven but I was really gaining more for, from it for the loss of her and openly of course there was another woman who came into my life based on a similar prayer and I spoke about that in my book Soul Keepers but I guess what I don't get is why would I get so many fucking signs for her literally letters and names and all this all the time for her if it wasn't meant to be and now I'm facing this absolute reality that I'm watching this shit unravel itself you know like people do and what fucks my mind is that the, her divorce I guess or whatever the fuck was going on with her and her kids and him or whatnot actually finalized on my fucking birthday or was that some police officer friend of hers just trying to fuck me over? So finally God says, go ahead and ask her to marry you. Which was your plan when you stood at that door. So I'm waiting all this time and he kept saying, wait, 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 wait. And that fucking day, there's a change of name. And she's fucking somebody else. 